in case anybody's seeing this now, we are just preparing to go a little bit to go live shortly. I just want to see the feed in case anybody comments live um, here on Facebook Live. All right, so here's here you're probably going to hear us talking for a second. Which actually, here we go. Let me go ahead and blow this up. There's the talking. All right, so there we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast, fully fermented live redux. So for anybody that knows um, our fully fermented live that we did for the month of February a couple of weeks ago is myself, my guest co my guest host, Tom Nutty, well actually not guest host, official member of the crew now, Tom Nutty, who's joining me. It was me, Tom Nutty, and uh, guest co-host Tommy Simbazo. We covered Eastern State Penitentiary, talked about that, showed the footage afterwards. I'm going to now redo all the old fully fermented episodes so we can do them here live in a live format like this and of course shout out to tommy Simbazo, shout out to eric woodworth and everybody from the laugh finder podcast who we've had on of course unfortunately we're kind of going head to head with them so you know everybody's probably watching it's completely understandable but you know i've had a lot of shit going on myself along with tom tom you just said that you just worked 28 days straight or 29 days straight some shit like that a good run <laughs> and of course uh this fully fermented live episode is based on when the happy hour tv crew went to uproar 2011 which was an awesome experience we reached out to the people from uproar fest they gave us press passes so we were we were in the back the entire time we went out we interviewed 11 bands we interviewed in this moment and that's when they were first coming out. And at the time I wasn't an in this moment fan. I'm kicking myself in the ass because Maria Brink is one of my favorite female singers. Now, like I, I feel like that in this moment now, when you watch their videos, it's kind of as if you were to go to a strip club in hell, that's <laughs> what their videos look like. And, you know, I, I definitely dig it, you know, definitely hot. Um, and of course, shout out right here in our, the Lazy Lizard, shout out the Lazy Lizard in Ocean City, Maryland. I am drinking our featured shot, which we debuted, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, Chris Kindle Glue Wine, which is a weird, rare spiced wine that my wife gave me. And she's like, here, uh, whatever, have this. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and drink uh, the wine out of this. But um, no, we were there. We uh, we interviewed Red Light King. Um, of course, Fozzy. We interviewed Fozzy. However, we could not interview Chris Jericho which sucked because Chris Jericho at the time was still contracted with WWE. So he wasn't allowed to do any press without WWE's consent. So as we were going over to their tour bus to interview them, Chris Jericho was walking off of the tour bus and we we're just kind of like, okay, but we ended up with an amazing interview with Rich Ward. Um, and then of course, POD, um, we were there myself, Alex Lunar and Chris Clow, you know, all of us from happy hour TV, we kind of, we had to divide and conquer because there was so much going on. We had two cameras. We we're just kind of like, all right, who really wants to interview who? So it was the kind of thing of, I'm like, well, I definitely want to interview Sonny Sandoval. So that, that was my number one. That's the one that I want to do. And they're like, well, we really want to interview Maria Brink. Cause they had a boner for Maria Brink. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, go in there and I hope that she doesn't see you guys having wood, you know, while you're standing there talking to her or whatever. So, um, but no, I mean, overall, it was a great experience. One thing that did suck is that I didn't have my phone with me that night. And what happened is our old co-host, Mike, he was there as well. And he knew someone who had backstage passes in which he was able to meet Brent from Shinedown and Aaron Lewis from fucking Stained, which is one of my yeah. bucket list things, is to meet Aaron Lewis. And he's like, bro, I had an extra one. I tried calling you or whatever, but <laughs> and my phone was in the car. So the whole way back, there were different times where I just visualized me throwing myself out of the car and <laughs> hoping that an 18-wheeler run over my skull. Now, of course, Tom, I'm sure you know a lot about POD, as do I. And of course, I, I feel like with POD, for me at least... I feel like Youth of the Nation for me is what kind of jumps out as yeah. their number one song. Like, I, if, if you were to sit there and choose like a POD song, would it would it be Youth of the Nation or would it be something else? Probably gonna probably stick with Youth of the Nation. That was, I mean, that's a staple, especially from that you know that era of music. Not that it was that long ago, but you know, say what ten years ago. 
you yeah. know you couldn't go anywhere without hearing that song you know <laughs> even if even if you don't know who pod is you know that song i don't yeah. care who you are you know well it, it's funny because pod like as good as they are you know you, you forget the fact that they're a christian rock band you know right. that's that's the whole thing and you know those morals were kind of you know instilled when i talked to sunny and of course we're going to be playing that footage right here at the end of uh you know this fully fermented live redux episode and uh you know when we were on Sonny's bus you know he travels with his kids so they don't really you know get down and you know party hardcore or you know anything like that you know they're mainly like cooking out and grilling and right. you know all kinds of shit so I, I mean uh, of course we've, we've talked about our share you know you, you weren't here last week and I told a story of how when we went to see Stained my friend jumped into the pond at Merriweather the little you know pond that shoots up and he almost cut his toe off and of course, you know, we talked various times about, I've talked about Metallica shows where, you know, dealing with drunk people with that. What, what are some, some of the shows you've been to? Do you have any stories that stand out 100%? The best concert I've ever been to was I went to Guns N' Roses when they, all the original members got back together in oh, like nice. 2017, I want to say it was. Okay. So somewhere in there. And then, <laughs> uh, that was easily the best concert I've ever been to, but I went to an, uh, an Eric Church concert down in D.C. And the concert was good, but I ended up in a, a karaoke bar at like 2.30 in the morning. But it listen, it really wasn't even a karaoke bar. It was run by like the Yakuza. <laughs> like, what? Wait, wait, whoa, 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 the, whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll rewind, right? Wait a minute. So you ended up. Uh, let me we're gonna we're gonna like slam the brakes on in the car we're gonna reverse <laughs> over the body and then run it back over again so you ended up at a karaoke bar in dc at 2 30 in the morning yep. which was ran by the fucking yakuza yep how and, did you find out it was ran by the yakuza well, and please don't tell me that you ended up hitting on one of their chicks and they wanted to choppy choppy your pp like in the back well, or something it, it it got super awkward but let me i'll start at the beginning right so we we we're taking an uber from the concert back to the hotel we were staying at because we weren't going to try to find parking and all that you know so we just took an uber we get in the uber it's like two o'clock and we're like is there any place open around here so the uber driver literally just googles to see what's open and he takes us to this place it was called like a1 karaoke or some generic name right okay and it was in like the corner of the strip mall and we go over there and there's like two guys in suits standing outside the door. Like it's a nightclub and they like carded us or whatever. So we went in, sat were down. They like, were they like, like big Jack guys, yes. like, like guys like our size or were they like these little like Asian guys no, with like were, sunglasses? They were yeah. big Asian guys with sunglasses, right? <laughs> and so, that, that's kind of an oxymoron. Like you kind of don't get like a big Asian man. There's not well, a lot of them that exist. <laughs> well, I found two of them, right? So fucking, we go sit down in the bar and we're literally the only two people in this bar. Okay. And it's, it's so fucking strange. And as we're sitting there, the wall behind the bar slides out like a movie. And this guy comes out dressed like K-pop star with like <laughs> five girls with him, right? Uh, so the guy that I was with, he stands up and he's like, we're going in that room. And like immediately we were stopped and they said, <laughs> that room is for friends only, okay? And well, we are the, friends. Me and him what, are friends. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was kind of the argument we made for about a second. And then we realized they weren't fucking kidding. Yeah. So we were like, all right, we're leaving and no bullshit. We started walking and we got no idea where we are now because the Uber left, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're just like, we're walking. And the two dudes out front followed us for, I know, a good 10 blocks until we went really? into the set. Yes. Until wow. we went into the 7-Eleven <laughs> and then they hung out for about 10 minutes and then they made their way down the road again. And I was like, I'm never fucking doing that again. <laughs> so here's a question. Would this, and you can confirm or deny if this was or was not in Chinatown. <laughs> I, um, I'll be honest with you, Ray. I'm not sure where it was. Yeah, It was right outside DC and we took an Uber there and we had already been like, we just got done a four hour concert. So we were already yeah. feeling no pain, but yeah, it was a little karaoke bar. I think they were laundering money, but you know, cause there was no karaoke. I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> so it, it was it, yeah they had to be laundering money because that's like what their front was their front was a yeah. karaoke did you sing any songs that was there anybody in there at all so no. so they there had guards no, and you so yeah i we guess were literally probably, the only two people there until that wall like slid out and yeah. then that room was full of people and i was like oh okay some shady shit's happening here <laughs> yeah and that that's what it was is whatever whatever they were scheming there you weren't there for it you were just right. there to sing some old fashioned fucking right. karaoke. Yeah, yeah. And they're just kind of like, no, that ain't happening here. That's why they probably followed you, is they were probably just kind of like, okay, you know, but they've what, seen what, too much. <laughs> but, well, that's the thing. Like at that point, like when it gets awkward, do you just grab like a beer and just start singing karaoke as loud as you can? Look, man, into, I'll tell you, like, like the beer. Like I've been in some awkward situations, but that one wasn't like funny awkward anymore. It yeah. was like, it's time to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was like, I may potentially be murdered right, right. now on the spot type yep. awkward. And All I was thinking is like, nobody knows that room is back there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. looking and back, it, it was kind of a stupid idea to try to even go in there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, if it was me and I was drunk with my friends, like let's say if it was me and any of my friends that I went to high school with that I partied with all the way up to when I met my wife, we would have went back there. Like there was no trying to, <laughs> we would have went back there. Like right. somebody would have distracted somebody and one of us would have ended up being beheaded <laughs> by a samurai sword. And that that's what would have happened. Like that, you know, that would have been a way like, cooler story. Yeah, and even like the thing, like I could see, like if the three of us were together now, we ended up there. I could see Matt trying to negotiate his way into letting us go back there because it's like at that point, it's like we need to see what's going on here, like you know. And I wonder if that's still there. Like it's kind of like a culture shock. Like you're driving through DC, and of course, like it's the kind of thing that you're driving around, you know, especially if it's like one of your first times in DC. So if anybody ever comes down this way and you come visit DC, you know, you're driving through and you're seeing all this different shit. And then all of a sudden you end up in Chinatown, just boom, just out of nowhere. And it looks like you were literally in fucking China and you're looking around and you're like, what the some of the best Chinese food you've ever gotten in your life. You can get from Chinatown. Oh, the yeah, chicken, you can't though, read the menu. The chicken 100% <laughs> is not chicken. It is pigeon. And I know this for a fact because I was in Chinatown and I seen a fucking chef with a meat cleaver chasing a pigeon down a fucking back alley in DC like literally like, like with the fucking meat cleaver chasing it and i'm like that's fucking what's in my chow mein that's that's what it is like it's that's not general so dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> he just looks at the chicken and he's like you're general so tonight bitch yep. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah um, that's that's how i ended up uh, in the yakuza karaoke bar <laughs> nice I, I mean here's the thing though like could you imagine if you would have went there and they would have asked you if you wanted would have wanted to be a part of the yakuza, like they just sit there and they're just kind of like, "This is the initiation." Room. Right. It's like yeah. you know, do, like you want to go back there so bad. It's like, do you like get initiated into the yakuza right. just so you can see what's going on in that back room? Oh yeah, yeah. If that would have been an offer, that story would have went totally different. Like you know, there's a good yeah, chance I, I wouldn't be, be here. Yeah, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You'd be somewhere. No like you know, i'd be standing outside the karaoke bar right yeah, now you'd be standing <laughs> the bar, like fine. <laughs> like uh, you you would be the pep the dog of the karaoke bar that's that's exactly <laughs> what it would be yes yes of course yep. shout out to our other fully fermented episode which is airing all throughout the month of february our youtube until further notice i mean it's not going to come off but it's our featured february um and that is with Eastern State Penitentiary. So make sure you find that on your YouTube. And of course, for anybody watching this on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button. It will let you know whenever we add new content and all that. And also make sure you go over to www.thhpod.com, pick up some merchandise and also find some fuck Tom, Tom Nutty merchandise. That's uh, also available too. I mean, anything that says fuck on it, in general, it's just great to buy. So why not have it saying fuck Tom Nutty? So <laughs> exactly, but you can find all that shit on my Instagram, T Nutty Eighty. You know what I mean? <laughs> and actually, it's funny because, uh, it, and of course, one of our fully fermented episodes we'll get into later on for a Redux is when we went to DC One Hundred One Chili Cookoff, and uh, we interviewed the Neon Trees, which was cool. Um, oh, but yeah. that concert, I ended up something happened to me, and I'm not going to spoil it because I want to find the photo to use for burn photo. Um, but something happened to me at that concert. 
once I find a photo, I'll explain the story with it. Um, and it's not the first time it's happened to me. It's, you know, it's happened multiple times, but um, no, I, I mean, it's just, I, I, shit, the last, actually, what was the last concert I went to, Tom? Last concert I went to was, uh, I went and saw Greta Van Fleet with uh, Dorothy opening at Hard Rock Live. That's that's pretty solid, and Dorothy's yeah. pretty hot too. So, dude, that she, yeah. they were the best part of the show. Like, yeah, I nice. went there to see Greta Van Fleet, and then they they stole the fucking show. Nice. But, I, my my last one, we went uh, around Christmas time, and we saw Pentatonix. So yeah. we saw Pentatonix live, which was cool. And uh, I remember there was a show I went to, and uh, it was when Hailstorm first came out. I didn't know who Hailstorm was, and they opened, and they opened. It was Hailstorm. And then the concert was uh, Seether, Shine Down, and Stained, and that was the concert. And Hail, and I remember seeing Hailstorm. I was like, man, they're really fucking good. And then, you know, here we are. Hailstorm's one of the most well-known rock bands out there, right Ar- now. arguably yeah. bigger than all the other names on that that concert. Yeah, <laughs> at this point. I mean, and, and I mean, that's the whole thing too. Just like you know, with our footage tonight with Pod, and also, you know, what is it? Uh, Alive. That's another great song by P.O.D. as well. And, of course, Sonny Sandoval, yeah. you know, with his rocking out, you know, he has the long dreadlocks. And it's it's just awesome, you know, seeing him head, you know, headbang with the long dreadlocks. And when we went to Uproar, they actually, they main evented what they called the street stage. So they had, like, a couple of stages. They had, like, the stage was, was out, you know, over here. And then they had, you know, the main stage. And when we went there, too, Godsmack was playing and Papa Roach was supposed to be there but Jacoby from Papa Roach Jacoby Shaddix got sick and once he got sick they had to pull out so at that point Godsmack went longer and Godsmack just naturally travels around with an extra set of drums so what they did to make up for it they went longer and they did the dueling drum thing so I don't know if you've ever seen you know Godsmack do the dueling drums but if not it's a it's a great fucking thing to see because I never even fucking new with any of that so but you know so but um no, I, I, no, wife just popped up. <laughs> uh, no 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 you're you're good you're good so i mean i i wasn't sure if you were talking to her or if it was the yakuza coming in there to silence you like you know yeah, know their listen- secret yeah they're, they're <laughs> listening now yeah, you know their secrets, and they're just kind of like, oh, we remember him. You don't fuck with Chow. Chow yeah, makes you pay. <laughs> he knows about the secret room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. You know there's a fucking Mr. Chow-like motherfucker. Oh, that's like yeah. running that whole fucking operation. Like, Absolutely. You know, you just sit there like you, like as you guys are leaving, it's like, so long, gay boys. <laughs> you know, and all that, just as you're leaving and all that shit. No, like, another so another funny, funny story. When I went to go see Dorothy, right yeah that's the first time i met uh, marianne from 98 rock oh yeah nice nice shout out to marianne of course she was on yeah she's cool as shit i like her but kirk and marianne together like introduced the bands that night right so in between shows they're down there you know amongst the people and everything and this is later in the night and i was pretty pretty drunk right so the buddy that i was with was like hey that's marianne from 98 rock Uh, so i walked up and like talked to her for a minute and she was eating like this plate of like chicken tenders from the bar. Yeah. And I was like, are you really going to eat all of them? And she just gave me her whole plate of chicken tenders, <laughs> probably just to get rid of me, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, just get out of here. Well, it's funny because she was eating chicken, chicken tenders, but she's a known vegetarian. So I well, think she probably was, gave you vegetarian chicken tenders. Yeah, you just it might not it. even been chicken tenders. It was whatever bar food was there. It could have been mozzarella sticks, whatever it was. <laughs> you know, I was pretty drunk, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just remember, I remember her just giving me her whole plate. And she was like, yeah, just, you can have it. I was like, yeah. all right. <laughs> oh man, drunk at a concert. I don't think I ever recall being drunk at a concert. And I think the main reason why I don't recall being drunk at a concert is because I don't ever remember being drunk at a concert because I was so <laughs> drunk at the concerts. <laughs> That's good because for a minute there, I thought you were going to be like, you know, because I'm a music purist and I really just want to enjoy the no. music. No, there, there's a lot of concerts. I that what was it? HF? Fuck, I'm. It was I think it was 2005. HF Festival. It was at RFK Stadium, and it was one of the ones the Foo Fighters played. And I, I was me and my friend were so drunk 
that we left before the Foo Fighters came on because when the Foo Fighters came to town in 2018, it was the first time I had seen them. And I remember going to that concert. My wife was like, well, didn't you go to HFS for 2005? I was like, yeah, but we didn't see the Foo Fighters because we were just so fucking trash. Like, there were, there, when I go back and look at that lineup, I don't remember any of that concert at all. I don't remember anything, nothing at all. Like literally, like just bits and pieces, like, you know, here and there. But that's how trashed I was. And I sit there and I think back, I'm like, I could never do that now. Like, you know, back then you sit there, you're spending like seven or eight bucks a beer and it doesn't fucking matter. You know, you spent like $400 on beer and it doesn't matter. Now I sit there and spend $400 on beer. I'm going to have to go out and sell blood and semen mixed together, you know, in order to fucking make the money back or some shit right. like that's, yep. you know. <laughs> oh yeah. It's funny how you look at things now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But- but oh man oh. So. but of course uh we're here on a uh, facebook live probably within the next three or four minutes i'm going to play our uh, our vintage content which is about six minutes long itself which will conclude our half an hour fully fermented live redux um featuring sunny sandoval from pod of course we're going to be on sunday right here on facebook live and for anybody watching right here on youtube make sure you find the episode um our guests will be Author Wendy Cock, she has, has a book out called The Awakening. We'll be talking to her. Um, yeah, and then, of course, in two, two weeks from now, we will be live with another fully fermented Redux coming here, and that will be when we went out to Skate Shop, and they had, like, a nice little party and all that, and we talked to uh, pro skater Ryan Boblitz. So that will be the next fully fermented Redux, and then we will be announcing what the next actual fully fermented live episode will be for the month of March probably on that episode when that comes up in about two weeks or so um but yeah i mean especially now that concerts are letting back in man i want to get to something like pentaton was fun you know i don't really drink as much at concerts as i used to and like we were talking about a little bit on this past episode with uh, kenny with kenny uh aronoff is that uh you know I, i can't really like i can't stand anymore concerts like i just i can't do it like i I don't want to do like fucking mosh pits and shit like that anymore. I'm too old. I just fucking want to sit there and just make sure people are off my lawn and just sit there and watch the fucking show. And yeah. that's it. Cause I get annoyed now. I just get way too fucking annoyed. People standing too close to you or people fucking crowd surfing or fucking, you know, trying to mosh pit with you. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm just standing here with my wife trying to watch a show. Get the fuck away from me. Because if you try to mosh near me, I'm putting your fucking head onto the concrete and it may explode like it, it may look like, you know, the autopsy report for Bob Saget, but it's going to look like something. I, and I don't know what that is. So, <laughs> well, I know, I know coming up in May, uh, we're about the same age. So you definitely remember like Jimmy's chicken shack. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, actually, we, uh, well, we, uh, haven't done it as a fully fermented episode yet. We have an interview in our vintage content from 2000, shit. which <laughs> is shack. So yeah. uh, they're, they're, uh, they're doing a concert up by my house in May. It's like oh, a, nice. it's like a mini festival. It's got a bunch of people on it. But the only yeah. reason I'm going is because Jimmy's Chicken Shack's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, Jimmy's Chicken Shack, dude. They're kind of like never, never. Like you know, if you don't know who Jimmy's Chicken Shack is, and you're from like this area, yeah. there's there's something wrong with you. And speaking of May, of course, May is our 100th episode. Our 100th episode of our regular show, the weekly, you know, weekly show that we have every single week. Um, and we're doing the first ever happy hour pod rumble. So, so far we have announced 19 people that are going to be taking part, 19 friends slash former guests that will be taking part of the happy hour pod rumble. We will be playing a lot of our games. We'll be having a lot of fun. Of course, Justin Schlegel, Janie Jericho, myself, you, Matt, um, Eric Woodworth, Tommy Simbazo, we're still waiting to hear back from. He may have some shows pop up. Eric said he's good as long as he doesn't have a show. Um, you know, a bunch of people that are just going to hang out. We're going to have a good time. NFL star Vincent Painter, he's going to be joining us. Um, Bubba Almany, of course, people have seen him before in the past. Um, and it's all going to be via Zoom and right here on Facebook Live. And uh, hopefully everybody will be able to come out. We're going to try to do a, a Hollywood Squares type game where not only will we be giving away prizes, but also the guests. You know, some of our friends that are in bands from Roses on Red, from A Light Divided, they're going to be giving out signed albums, you know, just all kinds of various stuff. Janine Jericho will probably be giving out signed photos. 
um, you know, just all stuff part of that. And uh, hopefully we can build that up and uh, have a little bit of fun with it. But uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get this screen share ready so we can go ahead and play the vintage content for uh, for this episode right here. So let me go ahead and hit the desktop right here. And then I will hit this. And uh, Tom, man, thank you for joining me. Of course, I know it's Wednesday night and, uh, you know, I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on Sunday, man. If you want to hang around, watch vintage content, feel free. Of course, everybody at home, this is our vintage content with Sonny Sandoval from POD from the 2011 Uproar Festival. And of course, before it starts, you're going to see the little wraparound that myself, Alex Lunar, and Blood did when we were completely trashed at Larry Flint's Hustler Club when we introduced it on the TV show. Of course, this is from Happy Hour TV. Um, so thank you for tuning in and uh, we will see you guys next time. Ray. Do you, do you know how much of a disaster and a train wreck that this night has become? And of course, it's the season finale of Happy Hour TV and I'm getting my head pet right now. This is awesome. Blood's probably gonna blow me later. That's nice. <laughs> Did you tip the bathroom man? No, no, but I was considering faking him out, acting like that I really pulled a one out and put it in his bucket and really did it, but. Oh, dude, <laughs> you should whip out your wallet, act like you're gonna give him a tip, but instead drop your <laughs> in the bottle. <laughs> or just open it, go to pull something out and be like, ah, oh, never mind. I decided I'd wash my own hands. Thank you. <laughs> did you give him just a tip or did you give him a tip? <laughs> Both. Oh! <laughs> just a tip just to see how it feels. Yeah, yeah. That's why you put any girl in glasses, all of a sudden she's twice as hot. Yeah, and I mean, really, some of those bartenders look like that they could possibly be the youth of the nation. And speaking of youth of the nation, we should, uh, you know, move on. Ladies and gentlemen, failed segue. That's a, <laughs> that's a horrible segue. The previous segue was awesome. <laughs> All right. But he blew his load on the first one. <laughs> He said that the bartenders are the youth of a nation. Yeah. I thought he said they were the putrefaction, and I said, that's fair, that's kind of rude, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to say to that, Ray? <laughs> All I had to say is, uh oh. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's the youth of a nation. And I'm ripping my belly for no apparent reason. <laughs> if you've awkward Dan's fault. <laughs> if you've not figured it out yet, ladies and gentlemen, we are returning to the Uproar Festival one more time. The main event, season three's finale. We bring you national recording artists, and as Ray so promptly put it, the singers of Youth of a Nation. Payable on death, they are P-O-D. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Happy Hour TV. I'm Ray, I'm sitting here with Sonny from P-O-D. How are you doing today, man? Good man, doing real good. As we know, we are here at Uproar Festival. It is raining, <laughs> and you know you guys are going to have to go out later on. You guys are main eventing the Ernie Ball stage, yeah. and how is it when it rains? Like, does it get hectic? Does it get crazy? You know, it, this this is probably if it keeps raining, this will be the first rain rainy show. Wow. Yeah, we've been we've had good weather so far, but it doesn't look like it's affecting the crowd too much. And as long as they're they're out there, we're going to be out there. Have you guys ever seen anything like crazy, like mud fights or anything like yeah. that while it's been raining outside? Yeah, mud going on and mud slinging and, you know, lightning and thunder, rain just pouring all over the stage. So I'm more, you know, I'm not, I don't care about getting wet. I'm more about, more worried about uh, the guy's PA equipment. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of money out there, so it sucks to get wet. Now, uh, you guys are going into your eighth studio album. Are you guys going to be doing a lot of that today, or is it going to be a mix of the stuff that you guys currently have, or is it mainly going to be the new album? It's 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 a mix by half and half. You know, I mean, obviously we the songs that you know most people know, and um, but we're promoting the new record, so it'll be about half and half. Now I noticed when we came in, uh, there were a few children on the bus. Do your kids always uh, travel around with you guys everywhere you go? My oldest daughter, she pretty much grew up on tour until she started uh, kindergarten and school, and. You know, I have two daughters and they've gotten their routine, but now my son is just turned five and I knew we'd be really busy this year, so I actually have him on a home schooling curriculum so he could stay with me. That way I don't get too homesick. 
Now, you guys have been all over the world, hands down. Where is your favorite place to go? What's like the where do you have the most fun and all that when you guys are traveling? Um, I'm, I like um, New Zealand. It's just, you know, it's a it's a Polynesian uh, island, and it you know the culture surrounded by you know the, the blue waters and the different islands and scattered throughout and around and so it's just and the vibe is cool down there <laughs> now being happy hour tv uh when you guys do your partying is most of the partying done on the bus or i mean where, where's most of the partying done for pod I, dude i i've grown up and i'm not too much of a party anymore like you said i got my son on the road <laughs> but you know i mean uh everybody kind of just hangs out and mingles with a lot of the bands you know a lot of times we're either on the bus watching pay-per-view fights or football or you know sometimes last night we had a nice little barbecue and a lot of the bands come through so yeah we're a community type band nice, nice. <laughs> now being on the road what's some of the craziest things you've ever seen now i know you guys go all over the place you know you probably drive through some areas like we're from baltimore so you always see those people that are just hunched over you know <laughs> coming off their highs and all that what's some of the more crazier things you guys have ran into being on the road um you know what all the rock and roll stories are true you know what i mean but for me honestly i i try to avoid it <laughs> i guess i've uh, i've seen my vh1 special i've read my books you know so i don't really encounter uh, you know a lot of that stuff just because i don't want to be around it and surrounded by it but yeah the stories are out there i mean you see it you know you get these girls walking up everybody's partying so damage can be done so you know i i try to keep my distance <laughs> And we notice us ourselves, we're independent pro wrestlers, all the fans that watch know, and we notice that Rey Mysterio comes out, and his theme song is made by you guys. What's yeah. the connection with Rey Mysterio? We, we're old friends, um, you know, went to the same school, grew up together, so when we were doing music, you know, he was this little wrestler kid, you know, going down to TJ, and we were like, that's cool, man, and, and then, you know, we went off to do our thing, he went off to do his thing. And then we finally, you know, came back to collaborate to do his to do his song, and we still see him around um, San Diego all the time. Have you guys ever been offered to play live for him while he's came out to the ring and all that, or have you guys ever considered stepping foot into a ring at one point or another? You know what? We've thrown crazy stuff out there. You know, we just did the ICP Juggalo Fest, so we were like, "Hey, dude, we're we're down for whatever." But we played the um, WrestleMania in Chicago when he actually oh, really? won the the championship. Oh, wow. So, and then in he's come out. To introduce us in, at San Diego shows, you know, a full attire, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that amazing thing with that Mexican heritage, with always having the mask on and all that stuff. I'm sure you know exactly what he looks like without it on, but all the fans at home. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks a lot for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Gentlemen, that's going to conclude our fully fermented live Redux episode. So make sure you check us out next time. And uh, this is going to go ahead and wrap it up right here on Facebook Live. Of course, this is Ray. Make sure you tune in right here on Facebook Live Sunday. And uh, for those of you watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Or else we're going to find you, we're going to track you down, and we're going to kill you. And that's just the way it's going to go down.